Good morning guys and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the Nakamichi NDS6120 DSP. Let's open it up and see what comes in the box. Now, for those of you guys that are new to Nakamichi, Nakamichi has been around, like the box says, since 1948. Why some of you might not know exactly who they are is because, believe it or not, they were known for making high-end cassette players. Of course, that transitioned into more diverse products, such as CD players, full entertainment systems, both for home and car, and now, well, they're back into the car business. Inside the box, you'll find the owner's manual in two different languages, both English and Chinese, and the USB for programming, bag of screws with mounting brackets inside. We also have the main power plug. And then underneath the lip here is the actual DSP. The DSP is made out of nice brushed aluminum. It feels really, really robust. Physical sizes of the DSP, seven and three quarters by five and a quarter, and it is one and a half inches tall. The Nakamichi logo here, as you notice from this little piece of tape, has a protective cover over it so that you don't scratch it. It is a 12 channel output DSP. On this side here, we have the optional controller input. It kind of looks like a phone cable. You have channels 11 and 12 on this end and one and two on this end. There's also your USB for programming. It's located here. On the opposite end is where all your inputs are. First up, we have a digital coax input, an optical toss link input, the extended Bluetooth controller input. These are inputs for outputs from source units. This is an add-on. You have your six channels, what they call aux inputs. Basically, that means RCA inputs or line level. Next up is this little switch right here that says host or accessory. If you're gonna be using this for high level input, if you switch over to host, this will automatically look for DC offset in order to turn on. If you're gonna be connecting it via the aux inputs, put it on accessory and it'll look for a remote turn on in order to turn on. Over here on this end is where the main harness is going to plug in. And this also has six channels of high level input. So this plugs in with the clip facing down. On the main harness, you have a constant 12 volts yellow, a black ground, your red accessory turn on, your remote output. Next to all the power inputs, are are gonna be your speaker level inputs. Even though these colors look like the standard colors that you'd see on a radio, make sure you read the chart here on the bottom to match them up. Input for channel one is actually this pair of purples here. Inputs for channel two are greens. Three is white. Four is going to be a set of grays. And then it cycles back around for five, which is gonna be green. And six is going to be gray. Off to the end here, you have a set of purples and whites, and there is no connection on those. They've just gone ahead and filled the plug, so you wouldn't be using these for any of the installation. Keep in mind, if you're going to be using the aux inputs, you'll have no need for any of those. You'll just be using the four power wires here on the end. Now that we have an understanding of the features built into this, we know it has six inputs. We know it has a Tosh Link input. We know it has a digital coax. We know it has an input for an optional Bluetooth dongle, and it has 12 outputs. We need to figure out how all that's going to work in this DSP. To do that, we need to download some software because without the software, this is just a really pretty box. We're gonna go to nakamichiaudio.com. Once there, as you move down the page, you'll find all the DSPs that they have. Along with the higher end 6120, we also have a six in eight out, a four in six out, as well as a four in six out with an amplifier. And then the AC2 optional remote controller and that Bluetooth dongle we were talking about, that's the NDS10B. And then they're also working on this guy right here, which is an eight channel DSP amplifier. But for right now, we're just concerned with this guy. We'll click on it, scroll down. It's gonna give you a general description of what you're looking at, as well as the all important interior shot. So we don't actually have to take this guy apart. They've provided us with a beautiful picture of it. Keep scrolling down. You'll get more of the features, the physical dimensions, what comes in the box, and then right here, downloads. You want to download your PC software, and of course, any software updates that are listed. Once you've 
download the software and have your DSP connected to power, plug in the USB on both devices, and then launch the software. Now that we have the software up, there's a couple steps that we have to take before we start playing with what's here in the middle, that big 31 band EQ. Don't touch that yet. We need to go up here to the top where it says mixer. This is your input to output selection. Across the bottom here, you have all 12 channels, along with volume control, phase, and mute. You also have your time alignment located down here on the bottom. You have channels so you can link them or unlink them. Here on the side, you'll notice it's high level one, two, three, four, five, six, aux one through six, SP diff, and Bluetooth. These are important. And the reason for that is, let's say the car you're working on has just two channels of audio that you need. You're not worried about fader, you just have a left and a right. Well, you have to assign these 12 channels to those left and right. Or let's say you're doing something where you have a left, a right tweeter, a left and right mid, a center, and a sub. You have to assign those to the channels they need to go to. You have 12 channels of output. Let's say you're just gonna be running a four channel input, standard four channel input. So you have uh, left, right, front, rear. And now on your output, you have tweeters, mid range, mid bass, rear speakers, a a subwoofer, maybe a center. It has to know where these all go. So let's walk through that process. We'll walk through the standard two-way, meaning a tweeter and a mid-range, rear speakers, and a subwoofer. First step we have to know is what we connected those wires for on that power plug. So the green pair, the white pair, and how I said that the colors really don't matter. You have to look at the bottom and make sure you're matching up that colored input to the number on the bottom. So channel one is going to be driver's front, one. Channel two is going to be passenger front. Channel three will be driver's rear and channel four will be passenger rear. That's a standard configuration. Now that we know that, we have to know what these across the bottom are going to be. So one and two will be tweeters, three and four will be mid, five and six will be rear, and seven will be subwoofer. Those are the only ones we're worried about. Knowing that information, we can now apply that to our mixer. Coming here at high level one, as we know, that's driver's front. That's going to be the tweeter. We'll leave that. We do not want to sum in three. We do not want to sum in five. If we're not going to be using in the aux, we don't have to worry about those. If you're worried though, you can go in and turn them down. If you are going to be running an SP diff input, which you can actually do, you can do high level and an SP diff input, which we'll talk about how that's doable as we go on. You'll want to make sure that you leave it so that the left channel is powering channel one. Once you have everything you need there, select channel two. Channel two, we want to make sure that high level two is on. We're not going to be adding in five and six. It's going to turn off these aux inputs just for peace of mind. Also to keep in mind too is down on the bottom here, the Bluetooth. If you're gonna be adding the external Bluetooth dongle, you wanna make sure that left is left and right is right. Channel three is going to be back to channel one because that is going to be driver's mid base. Channel four, repeat the process. Channel five is gonna be that first channel that is gonna be rear. That is going to be this one right here, channel three. If you're asking why channel one and channel three and channel five are on, like odds and evens, so for example, if you have a factory tweeter and you have a factory mid and you want to sum them together because let's say you just have a standard four channel amplifier, you're not going to be going full active. You can then bring in your six channels of input. So you can bring in your factory tweeter wire, your factory mid wire, and then you can sum those two together and that's done through the mixer. So what you do on channel one is you would leave on one and three. The reason why it has that level up and down is so that you can mix how much of the tweeter to mid range. The factory tweeter is just like really bright and obnoxious. You could maybe put that at 75% and leave the mid base up to 100%. You can also use this to mix in other things. So for example, let's say you have a radar detector or some form of a sensor or anything like that that you'd like to bring in. You could connect those to inputs on this case, five and six, and just bring them in like 50%. And anytime those things were triggered, they would come over whatever speaker you assigned it to on the bottom here. Back to channel five. Channel five is gonna be the driver's rear speaker, which is channel three. So we want to turn off channel six is going to be four and channel seven as we said is going to be our subwoofer this is where that mixing that we were talking about is going to come in if you want to mix in both left and right front into the subwoofer you can do that if you leave both channel one and channel two on or you could actually bring in all four so if you want one through four you could also just use both rears you could use both fronts you could use just one rear you could use both one front but it's a mixer you can have fun with it and play with it and, and figure out where you want your subwoofer to 
come from. In this case, we'll just leave the front two on and turn the rest of them off. With the mixer done, you have the ghosted image. So just kind of look over it and make sure everything is how you want it. When you're doing your installation, you play your polarity pops, the pop, pop, pop sound, and you check them. Let's say your tweeters are popping red and your mid-range and the bottom are popping green. So they're backwards from one another. In this case, you're going to be using a 24 dB per octave Linkwix Riley crossover. You don't want them to be backwards. You can come in here and you can select polarity and switch it to 180. So now both of them will pop green or red, whichever one you prefer. Now that we have the basics done here, let's select EQ. It'll take us back to the page. Moving across the top, you see where it says SP diff. We're still in channel one. Next, we want to set up our crossover. We're gonna use a Linkwix Riley, select a 24 dB, and it's gonna be a high pass of 3200. And as you can see, it's automatically giving us a cool representation of that on our display. If we link down here to here, what that'll give us is it'll match up our crossover. As you can see right here in the corner, it went ahead and added in that high pass crossover. If we unlink them now, the crossover will stay, adding in the crossovers for each channel. For the mid-range, we're going to start it at 3200, where the tweeter left off. We'll select the 24 dB, and we'll select our Linkwix Riley. For the high pass filter on it, we'll go to our standard 80 hertz, 24 dB, and Linkwix Riley. You'll notice when looking at the differences in this area here, the slope, that's what's changing. Five and six now. We will do a standard high pass filter here of 100 hertz at 24 dB and a Linkwix Riley. Five and six done, that takes us to seven, which is our subwoofer low pass. I'm going to choose 80 hertz there, 24 dB, just as before. And each time we do that, you're getting a representation here as far as what that is. So now you can just scan across the top. And as long as you see the crossover and this blue line right here, now we'd like to add in our delay. If you come over below where crossover is on the right hand side, you'll see delay units. You have inches, centimeters, and milliseconds. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. Measuring out where the speakers are, you set the seat where you'd like it, you put your head in place, and then you have a friend of yours measure from your right side to the speaker, and you write all that down. And you end up with something like this that has tweeter 40 inches, mid bass 42 inches, on this this particular car it was 65 inches to the tweeter and the mid base it's not uncommon the subwoofer 51 so you have all these measurements here depending on the DSP you're using that's where it gets kind of interesting not all DSPs will do the math for you and convert them over in the right way what we call the zero point in this case the zero point would be the farthest speaker from where you're at Think of it like this. Your head is the sun, and the planets are moving around your head. But you want them all to be the same distance because you want a stereo image. So in this case, this speaker C is the farthest one out at 65 inches. We need B to match, so they're all out here on this outside circle, so that your head is equal distances from each speaker. So if B is 60, well then the difference between the two would be five. And then move five inches out here, and if this was 20, 20, 45 inches out to the side. Now we are going to be doing a part two to this DSP where we take it and we install it into a car. And when we do, we will do address setting up the delay. But for right now, you need to get the measurements handy so that we can then go in and add them. The easiest way to test this, of course, is to just add in the numbers. If you get in the car and you notice that it sounds way off, well then you wanna do the subtractive method, which is what we have here written down. In this case, the 65 was the zero point, so you subtract 65 from 58, that gives you a seven. For that, that means on channel six, we would write in seven inches. For the sub, we would write in 14 inches, 31 inches for the rear, 23 for the mid base, and 20 for the tweeter, which is just the subtractive method. So we'll talk more about that once we get into the car with it. Let's keep going. Coming down beneath delay, you'll see where it says PEQ mode. PEQ stands for parametric EQ. A parametric EQ is a volume band here. It is a Q band here, these two red boxes here. As you'll notice, it gets really fat and then it gets really skinny. The reason for this style is if you just have a problem, in this case, we grabbed 6,300 Hertz and it's just, that's the one frequency that's giving you issues. Well, you can adjust an up or down for that frequency. You can also with a parametric EQ, take the frequency and move it to the left 
like this, or to the right like this. You can fine tune where the problem is. This allows you to fix a lot of problems by not using all the bands here. Just because you have 31 bands doesn't mean you necessarily have to use them. And as you can see, once you've applied the crossover, really we only have these bands right here that we need to worry about. In actuality, when you're done, you may only have to make two adjustments to fix the issues that you have by adjusting your left and right center frequency and of course adjusting the Q along with level. All this seems like, ooh, wait, wait, what? I prefer the parametric. It does make things a little bit easier in my mind. However, if you have a 31 band RTA and you have 31 bands of adjustment, there is something to be said about a standard EQ and this has it. If you select the button here, select yes, it'll shut off all those parametric features and just give you a standard 31 band EQ to which you can go up and down. And if you'll notice here, it's only highlighted the frequencies that are gonna be affected by your crossover point. Note that if you do this, it is going to erase all of your parametric EQ settings. So if you've gone down that rabbit hole and you're like, oh, I just, it's gonna clear it. So you have to pick one at the beginning, one or the other, you can't switch between the two. I'm going to switch back to the parametric. Below that, you see where it says reset all EQs. I love this feature. Sometimes when you get going or when you're just setting it up and you know, you're playing with it and you're just seeing what things do you can create quite a mess so if you select reset all EQs it'll do that so if I come over here and I go like this and I'm just like playing and just having fun reset all EQs yes I'm back to my factory settings everything is a nice straight line restore all EQs that one be careful with because that's like if you just want to start over and just forget all the work that you've done you can select that one over here on the left you have master volume up and down this is kind of a cool feature because what this allows you to do is if you're gonna be taking your car in for service or somebody else is driving the car you can set it up so that this is down to half volume and you can also mute specific channels which is extremely helpful when setting up the car when you're going to tune the car mute all the channels first and then pick the channel you're gonna start with in this case if we were tuning this system we would start with the passenger front tweeter so we'd mute everything but that we'd play our pink noise and we'd adjust for that tweeter figure out what it's doing, get our levels, set our curve, and then move over to the driver's front tweeter, muting the passenger to front tweeter, and we'd leapfrog back and forth as we went down. Now, once we've put in the time and the hours and we have this thing like, ooh, yeah, we don't wanna lose it, we wanna make a preset. To do that, come up to the top here where it says memory. Click it and save as machine preset. You can have up to six presets. Select save, we'll name it magic, select okay. We have our first preset loaded in the machine. When you're done, select quit. Remember how we were talking about taking into a dealer and you wanna make sure that they don't blow your speakers? You can mute your tweeters here. Come over here, mute your subwoofer. You can attenuate the volume down on your mid-range and your rear speakers. Come back over here to memory. Select save as marine preset. Select number two, call it dealer. Select okay, select quit. Load machine preset. We'll select magic and we'll select load. It'll upload that one back on there. So this is what we'll be using when we're driving around town, having a good time and join our music and we select dealer select load now when we take our car in for service all those selections we made are there the last thing you want to do is come back into memory save as a PC preset this is gonna be your master file if anything happens like for example let's say this decides to to go bad or lightning strikes your car or it gets thrown into a river and you have to rebuild and you want that preset well they're gonna be here located in your PC name it I like to use the date so you know when it was about and because we work on several cars we'll name it the color of the car and and whatnot and then we hit save that way we can come in as you can see we have other files here that we've done you want to make sure you save those settings so you don't lose them. You can also share them with a friend if he has a similar car, similar system. You can email him those files. All right, guys, this is the end of part one of this video. Part two, something to look forward to. We're gonna get this thing into the lab. We're gonna hook it up. We're gonna use the two accessories that are available for this. The first one being the Bluetooth dongle. The Bluetooth dongle will allow you to pair it to your phone and control all these settings from your phone. So we'll be taking a deep look at that, as well as taking a look at the controller, the A. C2. All those presets that we just set up are controllable through this. We could change our sources from that high level to that SP div input from the controller here, as well as also do subwoofer for level control. So stay tuned for the next video. And with that, we're going to end the show. Fernando, if you please. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.